You guys been touring Europe for uh, for a while now, or uh, is yeah. this the first country? Uh, this is uh, we're about three weeks into it, and we started in uh, Paris. Uh, met up with our friends, our family out there, Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Yeah, I just recorded a, another song with those guys. Um, it's going to be on the next album. So, well, if it makes the cut, but I think it'll make the cut. It's, it's a pretty good song. I hope that, 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 that I hope that there will be a bit of a turnout because right now yeah. there's not so many people. You know, we've uh, we've we've only been to the Netherlands uh, twice, and once was opening uh, for the Roots. For the Roots. Yeah, yeah, and uh, in Amsterdam, and so it's. It's all right with us, to, you know. As long as the crowd came to have a good time, yeah. they came because they really love hip hop. I mean, you could have a crowd out there with two hundred people and still only have twenty people that really, that are really there because they love it, and uh, not just there because there's free liquor or whatever, you know. And it's it's important for us to connect with people who go out of their way um, to reach and find new music, especially in the age we live in today, where it's like. You know, underground independent hip hop can be accessible, but people are, they don't have the energy to look for it, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, you know, they can just turn on the radio and they can dance. They don't have to worry about lyrics, content, or how long this song has been playing, you know, over and over again. So anytime you have someone that goes to seek out uh, a show or a group, that's the type of people that we like to perform for us. <laughs> So you guys are originally from Colorado, right? Colorado Springs, Colorado. And you, and you uh, did all of you move to LA? Or just a few guys and you hooked up with some, some guys from LA um, there? As a group, yeah, we mostly moved. Jay went out first. Um, we were lucky enough to tour with a lot of really great bands that came through Colorado. We opened up for pretty much everybody who came through there. Um, and so there was a couple groups that we became good friends with uh, and uh, some people who were really willing to help us out. Some cast from Jurassic 5 and Dilated Peoples, Ugly Duckling, uh, LA Symphony. And so um, they, when we made the move out to LA, the transition was relatively easy. But uh, we sort of sent Jay out first to sort of, to sort of <laughs> to man the whole scene. Exactly. And uh, he gave us the go signal and we all followed out in, in, uh, in the following month. So. So we live everybody. Here. I don't know if we're live out there. I don't know if they're live either. Brother Dan, how y'all feel? Y'all good? Come on! Okay, so you, you guys have actually been in the game for about eight years now? Yeah, eight, nine years. I think we started in 98. It was like when we first like became a, uh, a group of people. 99, I think we became the Procussions and then had our first single uh, around that time that came out. But you know, we were, uh, we were all doing our separate things. I, I was in the Peace Corps for a while, and other people were in school and doing college and, and all that kind of stuff. So we were meeting up, recording music here, there. It was kind of a hobby for a little while. I mean, it was a love, a definite love and passion, but yeah. without being able to fully dedicate 100% energy, it was kind of considered somewhat of a hobby. Uh, but then, you know, we started picking up shows like crazy. We were we were opening up um, for almost everyone that came in through Colorado. I mean, our second show was with Run DMC. Our first show, I mean, then it would you know rest in peace to Jam Master J, but Jam Master J was still yeah. alive and well, and uh, and you know went down the line from Dilated Peoples to Lip Quali and Common and, and that stuff. And we we decided to make an album. I think three or four years after really just performing. So we started off as a performing group just you know we'd get up there we'd even do freestyles we'd even get like you know we'd have songs that we just made that week 
or that next that that following day that we would perform or we'd rap over instrumentals and we started making our you know getting our album together and we recorded our album in Los Angeles our mm -hmm. first album put her put it out on our own label at the time uh, and then um, yeah now we've been in LA for almost five or six years and so recorded our second album there and now hopefully getting into our third so. Did you guys uh, start out traditionally? I mean, just like two turntables and a mic, or were you immediately uh, live? Uh, yeah. With the band? Well, from the beginning, we um, we're, we're kind of half live, and I, we. We're under the impression that it's very hard to duplicate uh, sample drums, like when we when we sample. And I don't mean I don't mean loops. I mean like getting the kick to sound the way you want it to sound in the, in the studio, that old, that old getting the snare sound. yet yeah. to crack yeah. the way you want it to crack, yeah, right. and manipulating that live, especially with the you know some of the venues you do or the mics and the room and stuff. It's just. Sometimes you just have to go straight off of wax, you know, that for us, that's what we love to do is go straight off wax. And then other times, you know, there's a spot in India and there's a life inside of, you know, playing live drums and keys. So we have that aspect as well. And from the beginning, we've always incorporated the drums. Uh, I think that's part of the percussion's name. It's just, you know, we're real heavy into the idea that, you know, hip hop is, it's hard is the drum and the way you rap is a drum and, you know, I mean, I, I've met b-boys like Quick Step and uh, people from Full Circle out in New York who would rap over freestyles. I mean, I'm sorry, would break a right. uh, break over freestyles because of the rhythm of of a freestyle and where you can land your body. And you know, we're also b-boys, and and so a lot of that oh, stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, we started. I mean, really? we, you know, Colorado is. Uh, you don't have a lot to do, so if you really like hip hop, like you really are involved in absolutely everything. So yeah, I used to write, uh, it would be boys, DJ, beatbox, the whole thing. So yeah. The industry are a bunch of toys. Every last one of them. <laughs> I think all over the, the world so far, um, you have the underground independent movement, which is, is pretty strong, I mean, and it's it's growing, and then you have like this this, this void, and then you have uh, pop, like hip hop music. Mm -hmm. And like all over the world, venues are like, are, in the States, we have Clear Channel, which basically owns every one of the big venues. Yeah. So they, they, they work the radio, and the promotion, and the venues, all. So if a, if a label comes up and says, hey, we're trying to push this new artist, then they, they pay the radio, the radio plays it hundreds of times, they, they max out the venue so nobody can get it, and only play that artist, and basically they, they monopolize it. And, I, and you can see it happening in Japan, and England, and all over the place, it's getting harder to find venues, but the venues you do find, are even that much more full of passion because okay. they know it's, it's coming out of struggle, you know? And I feel very blessed to be born uh, in the age where hip hop started and was beginning and to live and to see uh, throughout its life, its growth. And I look forward to seeing uh, pop hip hop's collapse and the birth of, uh, a birth once again of, uh, of independent hip hop. The renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people are paying attention. What you trying to say to a brother? Duckling and uh, 
they were the first group that we actually did longer than like a three day tour. We did like a week and a half with them only in Colorado. And uh, we've actually kept in touch with them for the last like four or five years. And we just did a tour with them last year. And at the end of the tour, I mean, at the end of the show, uh, uh, on the tour, every show we did a freestyle session and, and did our thing. Dizzy is, is a cool cat, he's a crazy cat, and he is awesome, so it's good. <laughs> Are you an avid collector? Not as much as I used to. I'll, I'll admit that. But um, but yeah, for a while I was heavy into it. And, and you know, LA is such a is such a different scene for like for, for like digging. Number one, everything is really expensive out there because everybody digs out there, and they know, and the record shops know how much to charge you for it. So it's not like, you know. Uh, living, living in Colorado or even some of the other cities where you can go to a record shop and get you know a really dope record for between five and ten bucks you know now it'll be like between 30 and 50 bucks you know what I mean so it's a different game now a little bit now and you know with the stuff that goes on online and and uh, you know the stuff you can find on there and, and there's there's a lot of little like shops where you can you know find like two or five dollar records or whatever and I think it sort of pushed me as a, as a producer as well to just sort of branch out and really try to uh, you know stretch out what you know what I have and what I do find and try to do you know and try to uh, li almost limit myself on purpose to try to like you know force a different amount of creativity out of me as well but yeah the digging scene is, is a little bit different in, in, in california because of the fact that everybody does it there <laughs> essentially a live band, people would automatically uh, compare you to the roots, I guess? Uh, I think um, when people see the show, uh, we actually, some yeah, we get some comparisons to the roots. Some people say uh, Beastie Boys, some people say, um, it depends on our set, man. We change the set a lot. You know, we try to keep it live for us. Uh, we're touring like 200 days a year for the last four years, so we try to keep it live for us, and uh, we don't want to be stale when we go out. No. Like, even though a lot of people, you know, this might be the first time a lot of people will see us, um, it's, for us, you know, it may be the 10th time we've done a show, but then we're gonna switch it up because we don't want to get out there and feel or look stale. Like, you know what I mean? Because I, when, when something's been practiced so much, um, you get lazy in it, you know what I mean? You've done the thing, you know where it's coming, and you go through the motions. So we did, we always, with every show, even sometimes every different show, we even switch, uh, we switch like a song out, a song here, and put it in a random spot. Mm -hmm. Or we always have a freestyle session either at the end, or having the drums there allows us, because it has to be, has to be live. Like we, we go there not just to, to perform a routine, we go there because we, we just, we're trying to make music on stage, so. Get a hold of your life, try to take ya. Get a run for the facts, you gotta make ya. Suffer cause your love ain't it, back for fame. Right, right. No, we op we we usually at least they usually give me at least you know five to ten minutes somewhere. In the <laughs> ah, totally and totally if it totally. feels good, they'll bring me. They'll let me get back on. Totally. Right. Totally. So yeah, there's right. only three of us here. We only mm -hmm. tour with just us three. Oh really? Yeah, there's no band. Members. Oh shit! It's just us. We play. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
It doesn't make us awesome, but it makes us incredible. <laughs> actually just landed a pretty good job working for a uh, major label uh, doing all the artwork and that was always his love uh, that battled with his his rap mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. and I, I try to stress this at shows and, and, and we try to stress this to each other and we have to remind each other always of this is that we, we do the music because we love it we, we don't do it um, to try and get famous we don't do it to try to get money um, we need money and, uh, and with some of the shows we do, does come fame, but we really do it because we love to do it. And we were really excited when we did our first show, we made just enough money to get there and get back home. And since then, that was about you know six years ago, we've been able to live off the music and we're getting bigger and I think we're getting, um, we're getting closer to, to fulfilling uh, this, our desires as musicians, being able to, to reach different genres and the things that we, that's our goal. And so when Rez decided that uh, he has a passion and a love for, for art and design and photography, we have to respect that because that's, that's the laws that we live by. And so we did that. But we, uh, we actually have a couple of things. I can't really mention anything uh, on this level yet, um, contractually. But we do have some things that we're working on that I'm really excited about and some very uh, special collabs and some very uh, some special music so we've got you know I have a solo album coming out on the 26th of uh, July on Rockus and then Stro and I are working on a, uh, a project um, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a different project but it's a, it's a project and then we're, we're working on the next percussions album so and you'll hear some new songs today too oh. that won't be on anything so 